How the heck are you guys? My name is Fastidious. Let's get right into it. We've got a great one. I don't want any clickbait. You guys read the title. We're doing Gear Raid 1 Stage 18. And this is a 100% free to play team with no legendaries and no AOE mages. You heard that right. So note, I'm saying 100% free to play, not free to play friendly. This is a free team. Um, all the champions we get are from fusions, our login rewards, and then there's two caveats on two super replaceable epic uh, champions, uh, epic heroes, so I will shout them out, but no legendaries, no AOE uh, mages, super doable, enough of me talking, let's hop right into it. Um, and I want to quickly highlight, we, we obviously have been farming this, but I turned Power of Dominance off. Uh, so this is going to be a very close fight, but we can do it. Uh, so hopefully this helps a lot of you guys out. So we'll hop in in one second. I just want to show you how free these champions really are. So we have three free login reward champions. That is going to be Ayn. We get him on day seven. That is going to be Mari. We get her as early as day three. And then the latest one is going to be Wrath. So that is day 14. Uh, then we have four feasible champions. You might notice Lunaria. I do not need her for this fight at all. I just kind of want to spotlight her. It's very exciting. The news came out today that we're getting a fusion for her. Uh, we're going to collect shards and then you can fuse her. That will arrive on Friday, so four days from now. Uh, so I figured why not give her a little spotlight. And of course, when that fusion gets closer, I will put out a guide uh, that will show you how you can get her free to play. No, ha no uh, hassle at all. You don't have to open up your wallet. So she will be nice and free to play and a free champion for everyone. A great hero and then we have three uh three uh permanent fusions so these are always there in the portal we have lightlock livian and theowin finally we have a rare champion this is autumn there aren't many rare champions in the game and we do get tons of summons early on so i promise you you will pull autumn and then we have our two little caveats like i said so why do i think these are 100 percent free even though you can't have a free way to get them because you do not need a money and you do not need vortex you just need some form of dps and you need some form of decent healer um, Amani is a pretty good DPS, not really for this fight, and Vortex is certainly a great healer. However, they are very easily replaceable, and no question, by the time you have played for 14 days and you get your Wrath, and you can finally make this happen, you will have pulled some DPS at least as good as Amani, very likely better, uh, and I'm, I'm confident you'll have some healer better than Camille. And basically, as long as you have that and you bring him to six stars, you will be able to do it. Um, so just to shout a few out with Amani, like if you got Brienne or Tauriel, uh, Brienne would be much better. Tauriel would be much, much better as long as you have them built up at six stars. Maul would be much, much better. Iona would be much, much, much better. You've got tons and tons of options. If you have any questions, just ask me in the comments. And then for Vortex, any Epic Healer or above would be great. So the Epic Healers, Midon, uh, Vortex, Hollow, Nisandai, they would all work perfectly well. No problem at all. You just need a second healer on top of Lightlock because Light Lightlock will be on the top platform, so you need someone healing your units on the bottom platform. Um, so let's get right into the fight, then we will go through how all these champions are built and what gear they're wearing, and of course after the fight I will show you the stats. So maybe you guys can guess in the comments and let me know who you think is going to put out the most damage. I think some of you might already know, but some of you might be surprised. Um, and I will quickly just highlight uh, the star levels of these champions. So uh, Autumn is four stars. Um, then we have five six star champions. That's gonna be Vortex, Wrath, Imani, Lunaria, and uh, who is the last one? And Lightlock, of course. And then our five star champions are gonna be Ayn, Theowin, Livian, and Mari. Uh, so without further ado, let's get right into it. Guys, I might stop talking at some points and I might do one X because this is a really close fight. Uh, it's a tough comp, you know, you kind of make it by the skin of your teeth. So you got to do everything perfect. There's Wrath. Let's get him out already. Uh, so he is going to be our floor unit. That is the only unit that's taking damage in range of Lightlock. So whenever Lightlock heals him up to seven stacks because we have him Awaken 3, but it also, of course, works without Awaken 3, um, he will stack attack percentage bonus. And then whenever he heals him with his ultimate, as you see there, um, he does some AOE splash damage. Then we're going to place our next DPS. So that's going to be our six star one in, uh, what should we call it? What's her face? Imani. Now we place another DPS. That's going to be Lunaria. Now a third DPS for the bottom. That will be Theowin. He also has some nice crowd, uh, crowd control from the slows he gets from his sabers. So we built him with some attack speed, as you guys will see later. Um, then we have Mari. So we, now we only have one deployable unit guys left. This happens fast. These are all very low cost units, which is actually kind of nice. You don't have to bring any cost regen or anything or worry too much. You can get all your units out really quick. So Mari is going to be there. 
um, for putting out her big freezes. She's got slow on the A1, so a lot of crowd control. And then on her ultimate, she also does vulnerability. And then finally, we place our last unit for this first phase of the battle, which would be Vortex, and make sure he's pointing down, because if he's healing Wrath, um, Wrath might get full and then doesn't get to be healed by Lightlock as much, so we don't get as much AoE splash magic damage from Lightlock. So now basically we can put it back on 2x and just focus on triggering our ults. Not too much to worry about till this wall is about to fall and this wall will fall. This is a very close fight guys. So you do have to pay attention to that. Um, so when that happens, at the, right when it falls, I'm gonna pick up Wrath and then that's where Livian comes in. I'm gonna replace, uh, I'm gonna replace uh, Wrath down there with her in this tile. Um, and she will then be the, the floor unit in view of Lightlock that is getting healed. So trigger, 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 keep an eye on the wall. Definitely a bit of a juggling act. Just gotta focus up, trigger. Okay, now it's getting low, so let's go to one axe, let's trigger, let's trigger. And like I said, the second that falls, and it also for me, it is quite hard to find Wrath in that madness. So I do like having it on one axe, because there goes the wall, there's Wrath. Okay, now we can get Livian out, beautiful. And now we're in the second phase of the fight. Mari died, unfortunately. However, that's where we can find a use for Ayn. Um, I'll show you in a second. We can just drop him over here. Just to, he's obviously just gonna die really fast, but he can just slow their units down just as a meat sack for a second. Um, he took the explosion of that guy. I'm f so there we go. Uh, let's wait, let's wait, let's wait. So you can see we're finally starting to kill these units, but the wall is falling, so it, it gets really hairy at the end, guys. It truly is by the skin of our teeth. So you really wanna be right on top of your ultimates, triggering them as fast as possible. I missed Autumn there, that's not good. The wall's getting super, super low. Okay, so now Mari's back, thank goodness. Hopefully she stays up. Um, so just to show you, the wall's really low, guys. We, we have 17 units left. Um, the wall could even drop and we can still do it. The point here is, guys, you wanna beat this. So now you can see we have 66 units, pretty good. 67, we are gonna make it. Um, the point is you wanna beat this because once you clear it for the first time in your three star, you unlock Power of Dominance, which gives you 30% stat increases across the board. So this goes from a really hard fight to a really easy one. I'll, I can even show you with an auto quickly at the end if you guys want when we do our little outro. But as you can see, we are gonna make it here. Livian's just tanking all the damage. Um, got two units left, and I will say, if you do get really close, even if the wall falls and the boss is getting low, you could drop Ayn or Wrath now that they're back up, and they could just kind of, again, be a meat shield um, if for some reason, like, Livian falls or whatever defender you use falls. Um, so there goes the wall, guys, but you can see Livian is taking the aggro, so what we can do is pick up Lunaria. Um, I can even drop Wrath because we don't need the big AoE magic damage anymore. And now Wrath can put out a little damage. We can even put Ayn. I could put him on this side. And now we just let these guys slowly, slowly, slowly take down the boss. Come on, guys. Focus, focus, focus. Let's do this thing. Come on. 100% free-to-play team. Take them down. They're making it so dramatic. But you can see how close it is, right? The wall even fell. But the point is we beat it. And once you beat it, then you can farm it. And, and that's all that counts. So there you go, guys. No legendaries, no AOE mages, 100% free to play. Um, and I know I'm, I know some people might not like hearing the word free to play over and over and over and over, uh, but I'm just trying to drive this home. Anyone can do it. And it really is such a game changer because you have a 100% chance of dropping mythic artifacts of gear, excuse me, mythic gear. Um, thinking of other games right now, but like stage 18 really is a game changer specifically for gear raid one because you go from chances of legendaries to only mythic and mythic really is like that you can already be getting end game gear and you could do this by like i think i did it on day 22 um i'm on day 24 of my account now i can quickly show you guys and then we'll go into the quick breakdown i don't want this video to be too long there you go day 24 uh but you know if you really rush it you could probably do this before day 20 even uh, you know, if you really commit to this build and you, you take advantage of this guide. You can see we don't have the highest battle power either. So, like I said, let's break down the units and then we'll finish off. I'll do an outro and we'll go over to, you'll get to see how easy it is once you've cleared it once and then you put power of dominance on, on auto. So, let's go to our units. So, uh, I forgot to show the stats. Oh my God. After we do the auto run, I promise I will show you the stats. I'm so sorry, guys. Uh, but Lightlock is our main damage dealer. Actually, I, I will do a different run and I'll put the screenshot of the stats on the screen right now. Uh, so there you have it. And I will do that run without Power of Dominance so you can see the, the raw stats. Uh, but so here we go, here's Lightlock. Um, so he is doing just straight up attack. 
He has 0% crit rate, like I said. The little bit of crit rate he gets, and actually 0% crit damage on this build. So he's only getting crit rate and only getting crit damage from Autumn. So you see some mythic gear, not all mythic gear. All we're doing is going for our highest attack percent bonuses, right? That's all we want on Lightlock. Get as much attack as possible. Is it nice if you can get some crit rate and crit damage on him? Absolutely. But if you don't have that gear like me, because you do it pretty early on, you might just have to settle for this. Just straight up, out and out, attack. Attack, attack, attack. There you go. Some rage regen is pretty nice on him just because let's go to his skills. So you can, Lightlock's the one that you really need to understand how he works. Uh, so his A1 doesn't matter. Attack based healing, allies in range, we don't care. But his Light of Cohesion, Lightlock's attack increases by 15% for 15 seconds each time he heals the same ally, which can be stacked up to five times, loses all stacks if he changes targets. Uh, so that there you go, do the math, right? He gets 75% increase um, from this passive. If you do awaken him, I have a fully built Lightlock. We have a huge guide for him coming out tomorrow. Um, if you do awaken him to awaken three, you get seven stacks, right? So that's an extra two stacks, an extra 30 per, uh, 30%. So you'll have 105% bonus attack as long as he keeps healing the same target. So that's why we make sure we have only the one ground unit at a time for most of the battle. So he's at that max buff when he's healing Wrath and then he's healing Livian. And then with his auto, this is where the damage is coming from. So it's an auto cast. I do recommend you fully skill up Lightlock, guys, so you get these full benefits. Uh, as long as you get the passive and the the auto ultimate, that's all that really matters. But uh, you can see, so he has a nice heal, that's fine, it keeps them alive, but then he deals 70% uh, at uh, of attack as magic damage to surrounding enemies. So it's a nice AOE. You can get an extra 20% uh, damage here, and this goes up to 120% at Awaken 1. So I certainly suggest you get him to Awaken 1, uh, and then get him skilled up here, because then you get 140% AOE. It's, it's pretty good. So if you have a nice some Rage Regen, he'll trigger this more and more, and then you load him up with attack. You get the buffs from Autumn, who I can feature now. Um, who, as you can see, I, she's rare, guys. Once, once you've been playing for this long, you have so much uh, rare skill ups, I'll just show you. Uh, it's not an issue, right? Over a thousand stuff. I don't even know how many crystals I have. It's tons. Autumn is one of the best rares in the game. Definitely skill her up because then you get um, here a crit damage increase up to 60%. Um, so you get an extra 30%. It starts off at only 30 and then crit rate over here, really amazing, an extra 20%. So it originally is only 10, but when you get the 20, you get 30% crit rate. So that's how our light lock is able to work. He's got tons of attack and then all of a sudden he does have like basically a one in three chance at the 30%, three in 10. Uh, to get some crits, and then he does have some extra 60% crit damage. So 210% crit damage, the 60% on top of the base of 150. So that explains how those two guys work. Now I guess we can just go to Wrath, because that's who Lightlock is healing. Um, Wrath, I just went for straight up damage. Because Lightlock is, has so much attack, he puts out some huge heals. Uh, so you don't really have to worry about too much tankiness. Wrath is amazing though. Um, and you can see he is a six star champion just like Light like was. And I, I will just quickly highlight Autumn. We only have it four stars. And in terms of skills, I only care about Rage Regen because um, we we're not using her for her heals. It's just, hey, can you get that ultimate out, please? Um, and her passive is directly li linked to her ultimate. But if you go to Wrath, he has natural tankiness, which makes him pretty good for this. At some really nice, good uh, HP uh, for a fighter. But I just went, sh again, straight attack, attack, attack. We found a touch of crit rate, so he's at about, he's at 32%, so just less than one in three chances to crit again. Um, you can see here, I did get this newbie crit rate build, uh, crit rate set here with deadly aim, but I really am used to using it for the attack percentage bonuses. But you can see, healthy amount of attack. He does put out some damage. You guys saw he was our third uh, damage dealer. Um, pretty straightforward. So let's go to our second damage dealer. So that was uh, Amani. Amani's not that important uh, that it is Amani. You just need someone that has nice stats like this, right? Um, so I'll just show you Amani's ultimate. Um, enters overload, so her attack speed goes through the roof. Uh, damage dealt is 300% for 30 seconds. So it's just nice. She just kind of spams, spams, spams. On her initial deploy, I don't have this leveled up, but she does get a touch of crit rate, a touch of attack, touch of crit uh, damage. We didn't get skill ups into that. And then here you go, some nice magic damage, single target um, on her basic attack. But all we're doing with Amani, again, tried to get some crit, so she's the only thing close to a crit build. Um, then attack, 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 attack. A little crit damage from the set here, but you can see we're just hunting, 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 attack percentage and crit. Um, but yeah, not so much. Attack's not through the roof like it was with uh, Lightlock. 
And also just to quickly show, Lightlock's attack is very, very high. It's over 16,000, very, very high by my standards. Uh, let's go to Lunaria. Lunaria is not doing too much. Uh, she's bringing the Lord bonus to help Theo in. Uh, so, and also herself, so 10% basic attributes. The increased range doesn't matter here. Her auto, she's doing these Dark Moon arrows, which is dealing some uh, kind of, a, uh, not really AoE, a bit of uh, kind of like, again, splash magic damage. Weird that she does magic damage as a piercer, but that's how it goes. So you can see we don't have her fully skilled up yet, uh, but she works fine for this fight. And then she's really good if you're bringing someone like Tauriel or Brienne, because then they're going to benefit as well from her Lord skill. So that's again why someone like those two would be better than Amani. Um, so I think, does that cover all the six stars we brought? We brought Lightlock, we brought Amani, we brought, oh, and then Vortex. So Vortex, um, he's got nice uh, shields and heals uh, HP based on his ultimate. He's got HP based heals here. And then again, some, sh some shielding on his passive. He is very good for this, because uh, especially with these lower built units, if you use them like me, they can die. Uh, so we just, he has low base HP, but we stacked it as high as we could. And then I went for some rage regen, just so we could get that ult going up. And then of course, some healing effect to make sure we have some nice big heals. So that covers our five, six star units. So moving on to the five star units. Uh, for Livian, as you can see, only five stars. Uh, full promotion. Guys, if you're going to use a hero, just fully promote them. It's super worth it. The stats from promotion, especially at six stars, are enormous. Uh, you can see a decent amount of mythic gear here. Uh, she's only five stars, so not so much base HP, but I just tried to stack as much HP as possible. So there you go. We're looking at about 45k, maybe a little bit more than that. Um, Ein didn't really matter. He is just our meat shield, but you can see I did stack HP on him because uh, he, he's there just to take some hits and slow them down. Maybe have some of those spider guys explode on him, make our fight slightly easier. Uh, who is next? Uh, we have got Theowin. Theowin, uh, some attack, not too much. Again, low base attack. He's only a five-star unit, but I was looking for attack speed. Uh, Attack speed's pretty important for him uh, for this. So you can see some nice attack here. This is pretty good gear, but you don't need it. Um, attack speed's pretty important for him because he has this large saber that deals AoE damage. Um, and then when the large uh, blade hurl and large saber are triggered when casting hamstring, uh, which is this passive, he inflicts slow. So when his ultimate's up, if uh, he then starts getting large sabers uh, from his basic attack, uh, he's gonna put out more slows, which is really good for us, and a bit of AoE piercing damage. Uh, so not ideal, but pretty good. Mari, just straight up attack speed and rage regen. You can see her attack speed's very high at 300. Um, I think about, you don't really need more than like 200 or 250, but we have a nice piece here with the huge, that's my only gold roll on my account. There you can see a lot of uh, rage regen. And then just a whirlwind set for extra attack speed. Not Everything's not even leveled up. Uh, you can kind of see why she died so much. And I think that covers it, folks. Um, I, is there anyone I miss? I don't think so. That's the whole squad. So uh, what I'll do now is I guess I'll just let an auto run run uh, with Power of Dominance now so you can see how smooth it actually is. So it's not always going to be that tight of a fight. Um, I just realized they didn't save our auto battle. So uh, I will, you know, I'm going to go behind the scenes now. This is going to be my other team. Um, I'm going to go behind the scenes now. I'll do the fight again uh, without it so I can save it as my auto battle. Um, and then I, of course, will uh, get the stats from it without it. So you can be looking at that. I'll put it up again now, but I'm sure I showed it earlier. And then I'll just do, I'll come out, I'll go out of the screen and you'll just get to see a full auto battle. I'll just let that run. All right, guys. So we got to do the fight again to get the stats. You can see I turned the power of dominance off. Let's get right into this fight. All right, guys, there you have it. Down he goes again. So you can see we're consistent. I know I sped up through all of that, but I don't think we wanted to watch it again. Uh, but there you go, Mythic Gear again. That's what. That's the benefit, right? Three stars. Um, I will save the shortest clearance. There you go. Uh, even though it wasn't the shortest clearance, so we can run that auto run. Um, there you can see a Mythic piece for our treble. I'll pull the stats up now so you can look at it, and then we'll get into our auto run.
but look at Lightlock. Basically almost 10 times our next best damage dealer. Pretty, pretty crazy, crazy stuff. All right, there you have it guys, you saw it on auto. You can see you do have to wait for them to put the wall down once you put Lydian, Livian in, uh, but it's it's pretty smooth. Um, so you can see, we should get the time check right here. Oh, they're not gonna tell us, but here are the final stats. So of course, it's not as much damage from Lightlock when you have it with the 30% boost for everyone. Everyone can hold their weight a bit more. But there you have it. Um, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please subscribe, please like the video, please share it with your mom, uh, and leave a comment. Uh, even if you didn't, why not? Anyway, I've been Fastidious. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Fastidious.